Hello again, folks. It is Sidecast Buffet here again, and what a crazy, historic finish to the Indy 500. Joseph Newgarden gets it done. Holy cow. I never thought they would get that red flag uh, waved at the end. I, I thought it was over. I thought Erickson won it. Wow. That <laughs> That was, that was definitely historic. I, I can't remember the last time they had an Indy 500 go with a one-lap shootout at the end. So i, I got to give them props to that. What a crazy race. What a great uh, event. So uh, huge congratulations to all the New Garden fans out there. I know he's a very popular guy, but uh, I just wanted to let you all know, hey, man, <laughs> this could be the only race today. Who knows? Maybe maybe we'll have a cup race tonight. Maybe it keeps raining. Who knows? So I wanted to go ahead and do my uh, post-race uh, Indy 500 reactions to it. What an awesome event. Never disappoints, man. Just so much thrilling racing. Some scary accidents as well. Um, I'm pretty sure the uh, the race win diecast for this will be offered from Greenlight. Um, usually Circle B diecast. They have a buttload of IndyCar stuff over there, so you can go ahead and uh, order that whenever it comes out. I'm not sure when the pre-order uh, will be available, but they usually always have the IndyCar stuff. Heck, they got a bunch of the 2023 IndyCars over there uh, right now, I'm pretty sure. So uh, for all you IndyCar fans out there, you want to go get some 164s, hey, check out Circuit Diecast. Use the promo code DIECASTBUFFET, and you will save on shipping uh, for any orders, $30 or more. Wow. Uh, <laughs> the Indy 500, man. Greatest day in motorsports. Greatest day in motorsports. I picked Alex Polo to win. You know, pole sitter. I just felt like it was it, it was a Ganassi day, and uh, <laughs> he had a very eventful day. He fell all the way to the back with damage on pit road, had to rally through it, and then three red flags, crazy crashes, man. And it's just every year they have the Indy 500. They're able to pass. They're able to make runs. There's no just, okay, you restart, and then you just take off and leave the whole field. No. The way these cars are, it, it, they don't. I don't think they have any form of a, of a restriction on horsepower or anything, but it just seems like it. And I mean that in a good way. Like, you're able to pass. You're able to get runs. The way these cars draft, it's amazing. And the racing every year is just fan-freaking-tastic, dude. Um, I was really pulling for Erickson at the end. I really wanted to see him win back to back because I love that number eight Husky chocolate uh, car. That's such a cool looking paint scheme. And uh, hey, man, <laughs> it's like at Daytona and Talladega and, and stock cars. You don't want to be the leader sometimes because the leader is a sitting duck. You either block and get wrecked or you let him go by and then you try to pass him at the last moment. I think New Garden was super smart there. He waited and waited, and he got by him right at the perfect moment on the final lap. And Erickson, I feel like if they would, if, if they had one more lap to go, I think Erickson, Erickson would have gotten by him. But he waited to the perfect moment. He timed the delta just right so that when he passed the eight car, there was no way he could get back by. But. Uh, I freaking love the Indy, Indy car race at these speedways, man. Like, we need more oval racing in Indy car. The, the fact that they only have two true super speedways or speedways in the entire calendar season is just crazy to me. They have Texas and then they have Indy. W what about Pocono? Let's bring Pocono back. What about maybe Chicagoland? Maybe Homestead? Heck, what about Kansas? You know, maybe Kansas could be fun. I, what about Michigan? You know, I wish they would run Auto Club Speedway because <laughs> these cars run really good at two miles. But my point is, is that this is the best form of IndyCar racing, in my, uh, you know, in my opinion, because it seems like most of the schedule, guys, is just street courses. And to me, they're all the same. They all race the same. I really don't find street courses very exciting. I really don't like them. They're kind of my least favorite form of racing. That's why I'm not really stoked about the NASCAR Cup Series uh, going to Chicago for a street course race. But, man, we need more oval racing. Every single time IndyCar goes to these big tracks, they put on a fantastic show, guys. I just don't understand it. Why won't they get more ovals? Is it because the racetracks don't want them? Is it because it's too dangerous? I would argue IndyCars are safer than they've ever been before. I mean... You look at the accidents they have here. They have the halo ring around the driver's cockpit. These cars are so tough. Just go back and watch like an Indy car wreck from uh, the early 2000s or mid-2000s or open wheel wreck. Those cars disintegrate. You know what I'm saying? These cars nowadays, are they are borderline tanks. That whole fuselage, the tub around the driver. Everything around these cars are designed to just break off. But the, the drivers, these things are very, very safe compared to tw two decades ago when... A lot of them didn't walk away. So my point is, 
Let's get some more oval racing, guys. I would love to see it. I don't want to see more street courses. Get some true oval tracks. I know they have Iowa. I know they have, like, Gateway or whatnot. But come on, let's go to the big tracks. These guys can do 230-something miles per hour. Let's use them freaking engines, man. But um, to touch on some of the accidents they had today, the whole first, uh, like, half or three-quarters of the race was pretty tame. Not really any cautions. Then it really started to heat up. Everyone was just saving fuel a little bit, you know. I'll lead a little bit, then they'll back off, and they go to second place, and which is smart. You know, they're always saving fuel right from the green flag at the Indy 500. That's just the way the fuel mileage works in open-wheel racing. And it creates a lot of strategy, right? We usually don't see a lot of fuel strategy in NASCAR anymore because of the stupid stages. So when you have an organic 200-mile race with no BS, guess what? You have fuel strategy from the get-go. And uh, that opens up a really interesting dynamic because it seems like no one wants to lead, right? And you have all these different teams and different, you know, you know, manufacturers and fuel mileage and horsepower ratios all trying to <laughs> filter themselves out. It's just fascinating. It, it reminds me of old school Winston Cup racing or even Nextel Cup racing that for that matter. But uh, they had one incident where uh, I think it was Kirkwood. He got upside down. What was really scary about it, guys, is the wheel actually came off the car and flew over the catch fence and over the grandstands. Very thankful. Thank the good Lord that did not hit anybody. It apparently hit a car or something. But uh, if that would have uh, fell short into the grandstands, I don't even know if they would have restarted the race. I have no idea because that would have been bad. And now you understand as a NASCAR fan why they penalize teams so much for having loose wheels because this can happen at any racetrack on any given Sunday or Saturday anytime if one wheel's loose and it gets hit it just launches it like a cannon and that's the that's the danger of having wheels on the racetrack because you have the rubber you have the air the way physics and all that stuff works it just launches it that's exactly why they penalize teams for having loose wheels because in my opinion you can catch a cat, you know, a car in the catch fence a lot easier than a tire. Them tires can go anywhere. Uh, so very, very, very scary. But fortunately, everyone's okay. <sighs> Man, I, I just, I just wish we had more IndyCar like big races because, like, the fact that they're gonna go run another street course. You know, what do you do? I'm, I'm so tired of street courses. <laughs> and I'll end the video on this. I love the fact that they restarted it with one to go. I truly thought the race was over. I would be 100% okay with the overtime rule. I know that's like taboo for an open wheel, but it's your biggest race. You got 300,000 fans there. You got millions across the world watching it. Does it really hurt to extend the race by a couple laps? In my opinion, I'm a stock car fan at heart, so that's a biased opinion, but I love overtime racing. I love green white checkers. I have no problem with overtime racing, and there's nothing more disappointing than watching two teams end in a tie in a football game or watching a great motorsports event end under caution or they, they crash with five laps to go and the wreck is so egregious they can't just fix the, you know, they can't clean up all the oil and all the BS in four laps or whatever, so they just wave around and the announcers just keep filling air time and, oh boy, he wins! I'm a traditionalist at heart when it comes to stock car racing, but I do believe some things deserve to be changed. And I would love to see an overtime rule in IndyCar. I would. I would be, even if it's just for the 500. It's not going to make them race any more intense than they already do. They already race extremely dangerously. That's just open wheel racing. I mean, did you not watch this race? They were going crazy. Look at Paddle Award. Look how hard he was going for the lead. So I don't think it's going to make the racing any more dangerous. It's just, you know, I feel like it gives the fans a ability a better chance of having something they can uh, they can feel good about leaving the racetrack with instead of just watching the same guy parade lap, and which we've seen that before. And let me tell you, it's really disappointing. Um, but you know, that's just my honest opinion. There, <laughs> I'm a stock car guy, and it, it, would it really be that taboo? I mean, think about it. They run the IMS road course after the Indy 500. I don't know about you, but I feel like that is more like anti-tradition to open wheel racing than having potentially an overtime two-lap shootout. But that's just my honest opinion. Going back to Indy after the Indy 500 just kind of seems a little off to me. I feel like that's a little bit more counter, you know, um, tradition, taboo, so to speak, to the hardcore open-wheel traditional fans than it would be to have 
just a two-lap shootout that might only be in use once every decade. You know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it real. Just keeping it real. What do y'all think? Make sure to comment down below, guys. What an awesome race. Now, for the NASCAR coverage, um, if they race tonight, which I hope they do, I'll have a post-race reaction to that. If they don't, well, we'll do it whenever they do. <laughs> I kind of hope it rains a little bit during the race so we can get like a midnight finish. I think that would be cool. Uh, so thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Diecast Buffet, signing off.